Well, Germany is being absolutely clear about what happened to Russia's most high-profile opposition figure, Alexei Navalny. Have a listen to Angela Merkel earlier. Dieses Gift lässt sich zweifelsfrei in den Proben nachweisen. The presence of this poison was discovered without any doubt. Therefore, it is now certain that Alexei Navalny is the victim of a crime. The attempt was to silence him, and I condemn this. Well, Mr. Navalny is being treated in Germany, and this story dates back to the 20th of August. That's when he became ill on a flight to Siberia. These pictures show him being stretched into an ambulance. He was then airlifted to Berlin, and he's been in a coma since. Well, here's Angela Merkel again, this time on what she expects from the Russian government. We expect the Russian government to give an explanation. There are now grave questions which only the Russian government can and must answer. The fate of Alexei Navalny has made headlines around the world. The world will expect answers. We'll inform our partners in the EU and NATO and will find a common response. Now let's look at what Novichok is. This term describes a group of nerve agents developed by the Soviet Union in the 70s and 80s. Novichoks were designed to be particularly toxic, they're very hard to detect, are lethal, even in small quantities, and can take effect in under two minutes. Most often those affected will inhale or consume the nerve agent. And of course we learned a lot about Novichok after it was used to attack the former Russian spy Sergei Skripal and his daughter Yulia in Salisbury in the south of England. That was two years ago. They were found slumped over a park bench, unconscious. The UK government subsequently concluded they'd been poisoned by a nerve agent in an attack that almost certainly was approved by the Russian state. Now, that pair survived. Unfortunately, a British woman who came into contact with the Novichok died. Here's British toxicologist Alistair Hay on what it does to the body. Their essential role is to block a message from nerves to muscles, and that sends, sends the muscles into spasm, really. The most crucial ones, of course, are the ones that control your breathing, but all your muscles are affected. And if somebody was exposed to the nerve agent through the mouth, then it would be muscles in the stomach and the gut particularly that would be first affected. And so you would get violent contraction and, and pain. And so somebody would be feeling uh, really um, extreme pain around the stomach. Once the uh, chemical is absorbed into the bloodstream, it would go rapidly to all of the nerves and affect all of the muscles and breathing. And so somebody then needs intensive support uh, in an intensive care unit. They also affect the brain uh, and somebody can become unconscious as a result either of muscle failure or through an action directly on the brain. Well, next is an update on how Alexei Navalny is doing. This is Jenny Hill in Berlin. He's still in a serious condition. He's still in intensive care and on a ventilator. And they still say they can't yet assess whether there'll be any long term ill effects of the poisoning on his health. But he is, um, they say, making some progress. Now, as you'd imagine, Germany's conclusion that Novichok was used raises immediate issues for the Russian government. Here's one Russian journalist. It's certainly not a substance that's lying around anywhere that you can just get at any pharmacy. So it also implicates, I wouldn't necessarily say the Kremlin, but certainly very high ranking figures in the Russian government, in the Russian system, in this poisoning. And if it doesn't, uh, then um, another point of concern is how did whoever did this against Navalny, how did they even get their hands on uh, a nerve agent like this? Is this something that's being used left, right and centre? I mean, what about the other people on the plane? Navalny was on a plane when he when he fell sick. So there are a lot of questions that uh, have arisen today um, around this. Now, it's reasonable to say that Alexei Navalny is the most prominent critic of President Putin. He's certainly not shy. He's called Mr Putin and his party crooks and thieves who are sucking the blood out of Russia. He's also vowed to destroy what he calls a feudal state being built. And he's been jailed over 10 times for organizing anti-government protests. For example, here he is being carried away from a rally in 2018. This was just before Vladimir Putin was sworn in as president. And to be clear, he has enemies among opposition groups too. For example, he was criticized in 2014 for what he said about Russia's annexation of Ukraine's Crimea. He said that despite Crimea being seized, the reality is it's now part of Russia. He added, Crimea is ours and was criticised for saying so. 
Mr Navalny also has led high-profile campaigns against corruption in Russia's biggest state companies. So there are a number of people who may not be well inclined towards him. Let's hear from Sarah Rainsford, the BBC's correspondent in Moscow. The Foreign Ministry essentially saying this is megaphone diplomacy and accusing German politicians of getting involved when the Foreign Ministry say who they want to hear from is what they call the experts. Now they're saying uh, there have been yet more public statements without presenting any facts. Now, as for the Kremlin, well, the Kremlin has said again uh, that the General Prosecutor's Office here in Russia had sent a request for information to the German medics treating Alexei Navalny. Uh, they wanted information, they offered to send information from Russian doctors, but there had been no response. So again, Dmitry Peskov, the uh, spokesperson for Vladimir Putin here, saying uh, as well that uh, when Mr Navalny was tested by Russian doctors, here in Siberia, uh, that no poisonous substance was found. So uh, denial and doubts being uh, spread uh, from here in Russia from about the statements coming now from the German government. Now, clearly, Mr Navalny has been a thorn in the side of a number of powerful Russian people and organisations, but is there surprise that this kind of attack might have been carried out against him? Well, not amongst his supporters, for sure. I mean, they uh, see very much uh, very senior figures in Russia being involved in this, if, to, if we're to judge by their Twitter accounts. Uh, for example, uh, one very close ally of Alexei Navalny, Leonid Volkov, has tweeted and saying, using Novichok in 2020 is like leaving your signature at, this cr at the crime scene. Uh, another one has said that this, uh, without doubt, cannot be the result, the work of anybody, apart from, he suggested, the intelligence agencies here in Russia, precisely because of the discovery of Novichok. This is not uh, the kind of substance that is easy to acquire, and that's why people are pointing the finger amongst uh, Alexei Navalny's uh, close allies uh, up to the very top. But, you know, from the beginning, it's been quite clear in Russia that Alexei Navalny does have a lot of very powerful enemies, not just because of his political activity specifically, so his uh, protests, his street protests against uh, President Putin and against President Putin's policies, but also his anti-corruption investigations, which have gone on for many years, are extremely high profile and target very powerful figures here in Russia, people with, uh, with uh, good contacts and people very close to the Kremlin. And Sarah, I was mentioning a couple of minutes ago, whenever we mention Novichok now, we immediately think of the Salisbury attacks. While the Russian government denies any involvement, clearly other countries have concluded otherwise. What impact has that had on Russia's standing in the world? Well, Russia would say uh, that as it wasn't uh, guilty of the Salisbury poisonings, that it hasn't had any impact at all. And it likes to focus very much on the fact that it believes uh, that the attempts to isolate Russia have failed. But of course it's had an impact. Of course it's had an impact on the economy. The uh, sanctions uh, politically have had an impact on Russia. It does matter. But again, Russia has continued to deny so many things over the years. Uh, and we're seeing the beginnings of that kind of policy, I think, once again. I mean, the question is obviously for the Kremlin. If the Kremlin is not involved and did not sanction this attack on Alexei Navalny, then perhaps the Kremlin can come up with the answers as to who might have done it. And in the past, whenever uh, senior figures here in Russia have ended up uh, getting uh, attacked or getting into trouble, uh, we've never really got to the bottom of who's been behind that. Thanks to Sarah. And with the Germans concluding Novichok was involved, now we have to wait to see the world's response. And, well, in some cases, the wait was not very long. France has said the use of Novichok is shocking and irresponsible. And we've had more from the German government as well. This is its foreign minister. We will now, without delay, inform our partners in the European Union and NATO through the appropriate channels about these new discoveries. We will debate with them how we, in Europe, can react appropriately. Our decision will also depend on how Russia now behaves. We've also heard from Boris Johnson, uh, the UK Prime Minister. He's tweeting, it's outrageous that a chemical uh, weapon was used against Alexei Navalny. We have seen firsthand the deadly consequences of Novichok in the UK. The Russian government must now explain what happened to Mr Navalny. We will work with international partners to ensure justice is done, he says. And here's the assessment of Tom Tugendhat, the chair of the UK Parliament's Foreign Affairs Select Committee. 
again, we've seen a pattern of violence against uh, activists, uh, of uh, against journalists, against uh, opposition politicians by the Putin regime that, you know, has been going on now for the best part of a decade. This is, again, another horrific uh, piece of evidence that what we're dealing with here is not a nation state in the normal sense of the world, but a mafia, a mafia regime. Well, let's just bring in the analysis of the BBC security correspondent, Frank Gardner. This moves it on to a completely different plane, Ross. This is, this is a totally different order because, as somebody explained earlier, Novichok is not something you can cook up in your kitchen. It's a military-grade, highly toxic nerve agent that was developed in the former Soviet Union in a laboratory, a secret lab in Uzbekistan in the 70s and 80s, and then subsequently refined by Russia to be used as an assassination weapon by the GRU, the military intelligence, according to experts on this. And we know from what happened in Salisbury two and a half years ago, the effect it can have. Look, the, pretty much the entire city had to be decontaminated by people in these huge, great, big kind of space suits. So it's a very dangerous, lethal chemical. Um, and even though this was taking place on Russian soil, not in a Western country, it's really touched a raw nerve with Western governments. We've seen reactions already today from Washington, Paris, Berlin, uh, London, and there will be others. So I think a lot now depends on what the reaction of the OPCW is. That's the global watchdog on chemical weapons, the Organization for the Prevention of Chemical Weapons. If they back this up and they come out with some conclusions, it's going to really put the pressure on Russia to explain this. There are really only two explanations, assuming that the Germans have got it right. Either the Russian state was behind this, or they've got a leak, and this very dangerous chemical has got into rogue hands. They're going to have to decide which is the explanation. Well, let's speak to Hamish de Breton Gordon, former commanding officer of the British Army's Specialist Regiment for Countering Chemical and Biological Weapons. Thank you very much for, for joining us on Outside Source. It would appear that there are some difficulties in countering the use of Novichok by someone, at least, in Russia. Well, absolutely. Um, as we've just heard, uh, Novichok was uh, used to uh, poison Sergei Skripal and his daughter, Yulia, here in the UK. Uh, only two years ago. Um, and it is a very deadly nerve agent. Uh, uh, chlorine is, is well known, but uh, Novichok is about 50,000 50, times more toxic than it. And we, only, we know that only the Russians made and produced it in the uh, 70s, 80s and 90s. So it has the Russian state uh, written all over it. And, um, but it would appear that uh, Mr. Navalny has survived, and, and that is that is amazing. Uh, but I expect we learnt an awful lot from treating the Skripals and others uh, after the Novichok poisoning. Then, which gave us the knowledge to be able to uh, save Mr. Navalny. Just so I'm clear on something, we know the Russians produced this in the 70s, 80s, and 90s. Does it admit to having continued to stock it? Well, no, it doesn't. Um, Boris Johnson, when he was Foreign Secretary, shortly after the Skripal attack. Uh, said that there was compelling evidence that the Russians were stockpiling Novichok. Now, we don't mean hundreds of tons here, but, you know, a few kilograms or, or whatever. And there's been some relatively credible evidence that the Russians have been training with Novichok uh, for uh, assassination attempts uh, like we've seen in Russia last week. And in your experience, would it be viable for a non-state actor to be able to keep and then use Novichok? I think it's highly unlikely. This stuff is, is very difficult to make. You need a sophisticated laboratory. You need, need a lot of intelligence uh, and research to be able to do it. And um, th this is a, 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 you know, a really important Russian weapon. Um, they know they designed it to overmatch NATO's uh, capabilities to defend against it. So they, they sort of have one up on NATO. So it would be very strange if they gave it to other people or allowed it to, to fall into the hands of criminals. So it, it, there is, without another explanation, one cannot see how it is not a state-sponsored state event. And are you surprised that whoever is behind this most recent attack would choose to use it? There are, of course, a range of options if you want to do someone harm. Are you surprised they would turn to this as the option of choice? Well, it's a slightly surprised, but um, there have been a number of attempts, and one you've just talked about, 
of, um, of dissidents or people who oppose the Russian state who have been poisoned with um, uh, polonium-210 in Litvinenko's case here in London a few years ago um, and a few others. So the Russian secret service does seem to favor these toxic uh, chemicals to be used to be destroyed and it's almost as though they want people to know that they are responsible because there doesn't seem a plausible um, reason why anybody else could be responsible.